Hey everyone, Kyle Gothi here from GoatFilmReviews.com and Kyle and Nick on Film on YouTube. Um, don't adjust your television sets. I know, we're in a different area right now. I'm broadcasting to you from a little place I like to call the News Desk of Nerddom. Welcome to Kyle and Nick on Film. We are minus a person. There are no comic books on the walls behind me. There is no black table here. And you guys can probably figure out why that is, but we'll go ahead and explain that a little bit uh, as we get started too. Um, it's just going to be me out there for a little while, uh, giving you guys some content, doing the best I can. Um, so I appreciate you guys staying with us. Um, we're just going to try and you know get through this together. But this is going to be a new series, at least in the interim, until the main show can come back on called Why I Love Dot 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 Cinema. And it's going to be my uh, opinions on some of my favorite movies, some of the things I'm going to be bringing to you guys. You'll know some of them. Maybe you won't know all of them. And I hope that you'll get a chance to discover or rediscover some of it at the same time. So... Uh, thanks for joining us again. My name is Kyle Gothi. Welcome to Why I Love Dot 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 Cinema. All right, guys, thanks for joining us again. As I said before, uh, I'm riding solo here for a little while. So let me explain to you guys what's going on. Um, I know we didn't have a new episode of Kyle and Nick on film on Monday, and we've reached the end of our pre-recorded episodes, and now we're just kind of in this moment right here together. So for those of you that I'm sure are aware, we got this little thing called the coronavirus, COVID-19, uh, moving its way around outside, and uh, many people have taken the opportunity to socially distance themselves from others. Uh, my wife and I have pretty much only left the house for need to do things, uh, running out of groceries, um, having to go to work because we both kind of have jobs that uh, some things going on where we have to actually you know be out and about. There's not much we can do to stop that. Uh, so Nick and I uh, did some talking about it. I know that he put his St. Paul film cast on hiatus for the time being. We chatted about it for a little bit because our initial plan for March was to record an episode for A Quiet Place Part 2 and to record an episode for Mulan. And of course those films got uh, booted back and we didn't really have a, an immediately... Uh, solid backup plan so we had to kind of figure it out and the decision was kind of made uh, just for the safety of everybody to socially distance ourselves from each other uh, we're both watching a lot of movies out there in the interim as well trying to just keep spirits high so I didn't want um, even though we're not going to get a chance to meet I didn't want uh, to stop the content on the channel you know on this fairly new channel still I wanted to make sure that we continue to bring great content to you guys as much as we possibly can. So part of that is going to be, hey, you know what? I've, I've got a lot of recording equipment. I've got some editing software. I've got, um, you know, I, I do a lot of the Patreon stuff that we have as well. So I'm going to try and just keep up with that as much as I can. Um, try to get through this together with you. We're going to keep that conversation going about the things we love about film. And I thought, well, we can't really do Kyle and Nick on film. We can't. There's no Nick here with me. It's, it would be Kyle on film. Who am I? Um, so I thought I would just take the opportunity to go through some of my favorite films uh, in a bit of a weekly segment called Why I Love Dot 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 Cinema. And that's what we're going to do here today. So i kind of just seeing what comes across my desk when I'm watching movies while I'm at home, while I'm trying to socially distance myself and get through this situation. Um, so today's pick, it's actually one that my wife picked last weekend. We watched it together, probably the first time in a couple years. And uh, that is Shaun of the Dead. From director Edgar Wright, the film was, came out in 2004, and uh, you know, full disclosure, I didn't like it the first time I, I watched it. I really didn't. Um, I thought it was fine. That that, that was just it's fine, you know. Um, but what was funny about a half hour after finishing watching the movie, it was like 2:30 in the morning, and I was probably supposed to go to sleep, but I decided not to. I put the movie back in, and I watched it again, and I found myself absolutely loving it, uh, really falling in love with um, the comedy of it, really falling in love with the tone of it, because it's a very unique film. Um, and I know that certain people have tried to play off it in the years since. Um, and even, of course, like the second and third parts of the Cornetto trilogy really kind of developed this unique style that Edgar Wright brought to the table with the film. Um, so I'm just going to cover some of the reasons I love Shaun of the Dead. Reason number one, Edgar Wright's directing. Uh, I know I just kind of mentioned this on the, on the get-go here, but Edgar Wright uh, is a, such a phenomenally unique director. It's really great when you have a filmmaker who has such a unique style and tone to them that you know their film. Like, there is no one that can make a film like Edgar Wright. And I would liken that similar to uh, Christopher Nolan, um, Zack Snyder, uh, 
Tarantino. There is no one that can make a film like those people. Edgar Wright belongs in that group because really no one could ever make Shaun of the Dead the way that Edgar Wright made Shaun of the Dead. Um, his directing style really showcases how Sean is a kind of like a, a child in a hum, in an adult's body. He really hasn't grown up. It's uh, you know we, we saw that a lot in like the early to mid two thousands with and even later on with like films like Knocked Up characters who are like man babies who like really need like something in their life to you know kickstart them into growing up and and at least appearing to be an adult. Um, and Sean is a character who needs that. Edgar Wright's unique style of directing really capitalizes on Sean's problems, on his inability to take responsibility, on his inability to see what he does and how it affects other people. Edgar Wright really does a great job of capturing that visually um, and using the zombie apocalypse um, kind of before it became really a big thing again. Like, we hadn't hit the full walking dead of it all. And I think that was when zombie cinema ramped back up again. This was still kind of an interim time. I mean, even... George A. Romero, like the creator of the modern day zombie, was struggling to get people to finance his films. Land of the Dead was was like his biggest film at that point. It was going to come out about a year later in, from Universal, and uh, and after that too, then he struggled even with his following to uh, Living Dead films. Diary of the Dead, Survival of the Dead, did not get a whole lot of backing. Um, really tried to make sure that he could create his kind of cinema. So Shaun of the Dead didn't really come out during the heightened time of zombie cinema. Um, and I think, again, Edgar Wright made a unique film no one else can make. Uh, reason number two, Simon Pegg and Nick Frost. And we've talked about um, these kinds of like pairings before, like Laurel and Hardy, Abbott and Costello, even Jay and Silent Bob. There are certain pairings in comedies that work so uniquely well. And I think Nick Frost and Simon Pegg is another one of those pairings. Now, we see them, of course, in the three Cornettos trilogy. Um, but also, they, they appeared together in Paul which is another really fine little comedy uh, featuring great chemistry and performances from them. And I believe they both did voices for uh, The Adventures of Tintin, I think, uh, playing to the inspectors. These two guys just have such tremendous chemistry, and it's really fun to watch them play off of each other. Like, Simon Pegg is great on his own. Nick Frost, great on his own. Put them together, though, and there's an electricity to the performances that they give both to each other, to the audience, to everybody else in the scene. Um, there's just there's something unique that comes out of that pairing that you can only really get with those two. Um, and I think that's another reason why Shaun of the Dead is is so fun is that at different times in our life, we feel like, you know, Shaun's character. At different times, we feel like Ed. Um, maybe we currently are one of those. Maybe we were one of those. Hopefully, we don't become one of those again. Um, but we, we've certainly been those people before, the ones who are trying to lift themselves up and can't seem to do so. Um, or just the kind of the guys who are just going through day-to-day -day life. I know I've been both of those in the years since seeing Shaun of the Dead. Um, and hopefully I'm not there still. I don't know. We'll figure it out. Um, reason number three why I like Shaun of the Dead, Bill Nighy uh, turns in a terrifically small, subtle performance as Shaun's stepdad, uh, Philip. And again, he, he's a character that could just be played for laughs, that could just be kind of, you know, an almost antagonistic uh, side character. Bill Nighy does so much with so little screen time here, though, too. And again, like, begins as a very played-for-laugh person. You know, like, that whole uh, new plan thing where they're trying to get to, you're trying to figure out what they're going to do to get to the Winchester. And they keep coming back to, you know, go pick up Mom, kill Philip, you know, and, and move on. Like, he's played for laughs at the beginning. Bill Nighy gets this great emotional scene, though, in the car, which comes out of nowhere, but also doesn't feel out of place where he gets to tell Sean all the things he's always wanted to tell him about being his stepfather. This scene wrecks me every single time just because of Nighy's incredible acting um, placed into a screenplay. And again, like because of Ed Wright's frenetic pacing and the way that he, he structures his film, this scene doesn't feel like it's just coming out of nowhere. It feels like it actively belongs where it is. Um, and, and it just, yeah, it just surprises me every time I see it, how much it moves me. Um, reason number four why I love Shaun of the Dead is the way it pays homage to zombie cinema. Now, again, we talked about George A. Romero here, the creator of the, the modern zombie, um, all the way back in 1968 with, with Night of the Living Dead. There's so many references to Romero's films, to specifically Night of the Living Dead, um, as well as other pieces of zombie cinema in the film. And just being a person who exists in that, I love that, like, candy that we get to pull out of the film. Um... We're coming to get you, Barbara. Iconic line from Night of the Living Dead. 
um, placed into this film very perfectly. So much so that director George Romero didn't even realize that it was a reference to his film because it just fit perfectly in the film. But then it also, on second viewing, can be something that's that's really funny and how it kind of like, you know, jabs at Night of the Living Dead. We get references to the Winchester, which was, of course, an iconic weapon from Night of the Living Dead. Um, the, uh, you know, then we get uh, Forey Electric, which is, I believe, the place Sean works at, referencing Ken Forey from Dawn of the Dead. We get Bub's Pizza referenced uh, early on in the film as well. Bub, of course, a major zombie character in Day of the Dead. I just love how self-aware, uh, you know, writes direction, Peg's screenplay with him, um, fits into this world. It really does feel like it could be an installment in the George Romero Living Dead series. And that's really a tough thing to come by with this kind of a film because it is making fun of it. It is a parody in a lot of ways. But I think it was Mel Brooks that said it best when he said, in order to parody something, it has to be something you love. Um, and that is why modern parody has really been tough to come by, is people are making fun of things they don't care about. Um, that is why most of like the later scary movie movies don't seem like they really like, you know, love the horror films they're making fun of. You look at things like Meet the Spartans, um, Vampires Suck, I think, was making fun of the Twilight films. You can tell these, these filmmakers making those kinds of films didn't love... Uh, the films that they were making fun of. Shaun of the Dead's different. You know, much like Spaceballs with Mel Brooks, where he loved Star Wars, he made his own kind of, what he would do with Star Wars. Um, Shaun of the Dead is what Edgar Wright would make for a zombie film. And it it is so respectful of zombie cinema, while at the same time poking fun at it, jabbing at it, letting people know that this is still a horror film wrapped in a comedy. Um... And I think that's what's really unique about it. The last thing, and it's kind of a playoff of that too, is the perfect mixture of horror and comedy. This film is never full comedy and it's never full horror. It just bleeds between the two so well. And this is again where Ed Wright's great directing comes in. He never once goes over the line in comedy and he never once goes over the line being too horrific. He really plays to that central part where the audience is going to enjoy it. And I think that's really tough for a lot of people to do when they make a horror comedy is to, are we making it too goofy? Are we making it too uh, hardcore? Where it just doesn't really fit with either. He walks that line so perfectly. And I think nowhere do we see that more um, more well laid out in the film than the Don't Stop Me Now sequence in the Winchester where they're all taking the pool cues and Queen is playing on the, the jukebox and they're hitting the guy. And it's done in like a campy, silly way, but it never feels too over the top. And it never feels too horrific but it's a horror scene wrapped with the lacing of comedy um and, and the idea that like anything can be a weapon but at the same time what would you do in the situation i don't know um yeah overall many more reasons why i love Shaun of the dead those are just a few of them have you guys seen the film i'm sure you have it's a very popular movie uh if you haven't had a chance to revisit it in a while do so if you've never seen it i gotta recommend it to you because um, i think if you're a comedy fan you'll like it if you're a horror fan you'll like it if you don't like either of those kinds of films well, that's kind of weird, but like at least um, think about giving it a try, I guess. Uh, if you check out the film again anytime soon, comment below. Let me know what you guys are thinking about it. Um, let me know what the reasons are that you love this film. Or if you hate the movie, let me know why you hate the movie too. I want to hear that kind of stuff. Um, that's it for this episode, guys. Uh, real quick, we still have the Patreon out and about. You guys can join the Patreon. I got the link below this video. You can go check out the Kyle and Nick on Film Patreon page. Become a patron of us. When we get the flagship show going again, um, we will have plenty of room for your picks of films that you want us to review on the show. Um, and you can do that actually by becoming a patron. There's also some other cool tiers on there as well. So check out that in the description. If you guys can't afford to become a patron of the show, which we do offer some very low-end Patreon posts. Um, but if you guys can't afford to do so, then there are other ways you can help support the channel. Like this video. Comment below with your thoughts on the film. Um, anything that you want to see uh, me talk about. Maybe if there's a film that you really love and you want to see if I do as well, comment below as well. If you want to comment with some things that you'd like to see us talk about on future episodes, do so there as well. Share the video. Subscribe. These are all inexpensive or free ways to help support the channel, but we always do love that Patreon support as well too. So check out those options when you guys have a chance. You guys can find all of my many written reviews on GoatFilmReviews.com. You can also find Goat Film Reviews on YouTube. And I left a little spot for that in the description below as well. If you guys are interested in reading some of the backlogged or listening to some of the backlogged episodes of St. Paul Filmcast, that's going to be down here as well. Got some Twitter posts for you. Uh, please take the opportunity to check out some of the great content that we'll be doing. And hopefully we'll see you guys again soon. 
Um, hopefully not too soon uh, from when we're going to actually have the flagship show up and going again. But until that happens, I'll be coming at you guys every single week with some different films that I love in cinema. Thanks again for joining us, guys. And until next time, we'll see you later.